In this tutorial, we're going to have a look at detecting collisions. Currently, we have two cubes. One is moving and one is static on the screen. This is built from another tutorial called Animating Object Movements on the XY Axis or XYZ Axis. So I'll put a link to that in the comments below so you can build this. But basically, we have a one cube, cube one, O1, just moving backwards and forwards, and cube O2 sitting on screen. But what I want to know is whenever cube one touches cube two, and this way we can actually display this in the console and let us know that there is a collision that's occurring because later on we could script this then to disappear or do other things or control other objects within our game. So let's get underway and have a look at how we can actually detect collisions. This project has a few little components in it. It actually has the materials which are controlling the colors. So I just got some basic colors. I'll put a link in the comments how you can build materials. Um, there is a script that is running which is back forward motion this is the script that is controlling the red cube moving backwards and forward. It uses a um, MathFs function called ping pong. A link to this tutorial will be in the comments below. There is also the standard assets for the character controller. This gives us the first person walk around. So when I'm in the game, I can actually move around the objects and actually look at them. I can also jump on them, etc. So this is a good thing to have a look at as well. I'll put in the comments a link to the tutorial that can help you install this. So let's get down to actually scripting the collision. To script the collision, we're going to be working with one of our scripts from before. Now this script at the moment is actually associated with our cube one, which is the red one. If we double click up here, we can actually zoom in on it, the same with object two. So we're dealing with object one at the moment. Currently there is a script associated with this. You can see the back and forth motion one. And this is the one we want to edit. So when I go in there, we can see there is an update at the moment, but we want to actually make a collision. So just below this update one, we're going to create a new function. So it's going to be called void. And then we're going to call the on collision function. We're going to be looking for a collision and we're going to call it coal. So we're going to open a brace and close a brace. Now what we want to do is actually look and say, well, if there is a collision, so if the two objects do touch each other as a collision, it, the information is going to be stored in coal. So coal is like a variable. And we're going to look at the game object. And we're going to have a look at its name. So I want to know what the name is and that will sit between two brackets. Then we can open and close the braces for the if statement. So we want to know the name of the object. So when we go back and look at our game, when object one collides with cube two, so I want to know when this cube hits this cube, we can take the name from up here, or you can get the name from out of the hierarchy over here. So I'm just copying and pasting that. So what I want to know is if the object, in this case here, because this script is actually associated with cube one, that if cube one has touched cube two, if they do touch, I just want to do something simple. I want to run a debug line and I want to run it out to the log file, which is on screen and just put collision detected. That's all I want it to do. I just want it to tell me that there's been a collision and that we know that it's occurred. So let's just save this, go back to our game and run our game. We need to go into the console. So I'm just gonna push escape, head into the console and we need to be looking for that collision. As you can tell down in the console, there's no message coming out at the moment. So let's go have a look at our two objects. First of all, there is no rigid body on this object. So it's very important that you place rigid bodies onto objects. This gives it sort of mass, it gives it a structure. So we're just gonna go down to add component and we're gonna add a rigid body. Now rigid bodies are affected by gravity and you can see the constraints here for X, Y, Z if you don't want it to move, but I'm happy for them to move at the moment. So now it's a rigid body. Now we're gonna apply a rigid body to the second object. Now both objects actually have mass. So we're just gonna go up and run the game now. 
see what happens, it's actually moving. We can also see down in our comments here, collision detected. So we know there has been a collision, but the red one's pushing the purple one around as well. So we've got a detection and we know that it's working. So rigid bodies are really important when you're trying to find out two objects are touching. What we can also do with the rigid bodies and the collision, now that we've detected them, is actually remove the object we collided with from the screen. So let's go back to our code. To do this, we know that the collision has occurred here. And what we want to do inside the if statement, so if the object was called um, cube 01, it could be called diamond 01, it could be um, objects you need to collect, etc. So say if they are collecting diamonds and things like that, once you've collected the diamond, you don't want the diamond to be on the screen anymore. So say if in this case it's a cube, we can actually go uh, destroy and we can then go, well, what do we want to destroy? We know what the collision object is because it's saved in collision. We've detected that up in the function header. And then we can actually get rid of the game object. So destroy the collision game object. So if it is, the collision is with cube 02, then destroy cube 02. So we'll put a semicolon on the end of this, and then we'll save this and go run our program. Now once the cube touches, the purple cube disappears. So this is how we can detect collisions between two objects. I hope you found this tutorial useful. If you did, like and subscribe to my channel, and also have a look around in my YouTube channel for other useful Unity tutorials.